So for the past three months, my main computer for pretty much anything and everything I do has been the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. And spoiler alert, I absolutely love this thing. So prior to owning this M1 Mac, I had an almost maxed out MacBook Pro 16 inch. Like I'm talking, you know, i9 processor, AMD Radeon Pro 5500M, four terabyte SSD and 32 GB RAM. Like this thing was solid and I spent over five grand Canadian on that laptop. Now I love this laptop and there wasn't a thing it couldn't handle until the infamous 2020 cameras. Dun, dun, dun. The Sony A7S III and the Canon EOS R5. Now the 4K 10 bit H.265 footage coming out of this camera did a number on that laptop. Like I'm talking fans louder than a prepubescent Justin Bieber concert. Yeah. And beyond that, there was just a lot of times I had to transcode the footage in order to edit it properly on that laptop. So Q, <laughs> M1 Max. Apple dropped their entire lineup, like their initial lineup of the M1 Max, the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 uh, MacBook Air, and the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, if you're trying to decide between either of those, I dropped a video on that up here, so I'll have that linked. And also, I did a detailed video comparing my 16 inch MacBook Pro to the M1 MacBook Air, like the Air model, no fans, base spec, 8 GB uh, unified memory, not even the 16 GB version, and you will be shocked by the performance gains I was getting from the M1 chip. But that video is linked here as well, so go ahead and check that out after this video. But TLDR, the M1 Max smoked my maxed out 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro. And that was a shocking part to me because these things, like these things are a fraction of the cost of what those come in at. And you know what the kicker is? The fan on this, for the most part, doesn't even turn on. Like, I can't remember the last time it went on. For a majority of my editing and everything, it's pretty much silent, which is why I think the MacBook Air is still such a great option for most people out there because these things run pretty cool. The one I'm using currently right now, so initially I had all three of them, but the one that I currently stuck with for my personal needs uh, is the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. I opted for the Pro version just because in case if I ever needed the fan. So I decided to spec this one out with the 16 GB unified memory. Uh, I definitely recommend if you are in content creation and you're making videos and stuff like that, to opt for the 16 GB version, uh, just so that you're covered. And I also got the one terabyte SSD. And on top of all of that, the battery life is phenomenal. Like the best I've had on any laptop. Like I could edit anywhere, edit a full video from start to finish, edit the thumbnail on Photoshop, Lightroom, and upload it on YouTube and still have battery life left over. Even the mic on this sounds amazing. Uh, I mean, I've actually had to do some voiceovers for some of my videos and to use something like this in a pinch, it actually sounds really good. The build quality, the like the chassis, the aluminum design, everything is really good. I absolutely love it. It feels premium, uh, just like all the other MacBook Pros. It also has the beloved scissor switch keyboard, which I absolutely love. I think the typing experience on the scissor switch keyboard is really good. It's clicky enough where it has nice tactile feel to it. And also, I mean, I, I haven't had any issues with it thus far. It also has the infamous touch bar, which I know it's a little bit of a tricky topic, but I, I like it. I like the touch bar. I think it gives me helpful information when I want, where I want it. So I don't mind the touch bar. Also, I must say going to the 13 inch MacBook Pro from my 16 inch MacBook Pro is somewhat refreshing because it's so much smaller, portable, lighter. It's just sometimes more enjoyable overall to have a smaller package. But you know what, like with all things in life, and with people as well, I guess. Uh, this thing has its fair share of cons as well. I mean, the first one being, I, uh, going back to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I do miss a 16 inch sometimes. Having that like larger real estate was really nice when I'm like viewing content on it, or especially when I'm editing. Having that extra real estate for editing was definitely helpful. Although it is more portable, that's one drawback with it. Secondly, and I think that is one of the biggest problems with the M1 Max right now is the ports. Like I wish Apple just gave us more ports, like at least because this is the pro version, if they gave us four ports on this, this thing would have been so much better and easier to, to use. Next, because this is a new chip, I was afraid that there may be some software limitations or some software compatibility issues. I'm happy to report that pretty much 80% of 
everything that I do on this computer has been unaffected. Uh, I mean, Photoshop, Lightroom, everything has been functioning really well on this. Now, the part that irks me is that there's a few plugins that I use on Final Cut Pro in order to edit my videos, and not all of those plugins, like there's a bunch that are still incompatible with the M1 chip, which is kind of annoying. And last but not least, and this has been thoroughly documented on the interwebs, some of the M1 Macs are giving people Bluetooth issues. Now, I personally face some of these issues myself Itself. So I've actually had to get one of these uh, Logitech unifying receivers and I've been using that plugged in in order to you know use my mouse and stuff because I was randomly running into issues where the mouse was lagging and it would just cause hiccups with my Bluetooth devices. So that part is pretty frustrating. But I found after using this receiver, it cleared up a lot of the Bluetooth issues I was having. Um, however, I still get the occasional like AirPods, you know, not connecting properly, those sort of Bluetooth connectivity issues. And for that, I have to keep going into the reset Bluetooth module option, and then I'm good to go. Just something for you to know that that is something that is plaguing some of these machines. So be ready. It can be pretty frustrating to go through these Bluetooth issues. So they are definitely there. Other than that, I think overall, this is probably one of the best laptops and computers that I have used to date. And I can, without hesitation, recommend this to anybody looking to purchase a high quality, good computer or laptop that will last them a long time. And looking to the future, I know there are a whole bunch of rumors that Apple is going to release more M1, like the pro models of the M1 Max later this year. So if you, if you, can, so if you can wait, then that is definitely coming as well. But I will say this, I think for majority of the people the Max that have already been released, like the M1 Max, especially the M1 MacBook Air, is probably the perfect device for the vast majority of people. And I mean, the ones that are coming out are most likely going to be pro models. In any case, I hope this video was helpful, beneficial, helped you guys make a decision if you guys were looking to make one or just learn more about this. So in that case, if you did find it helpful, please go ahead and give me a like down below. If you like content around tech gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. If you're interested in finance related content, I just started a brand new channel, which I'll also link in the description down below. So go ahead and check that out if you have some time. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, stay blessed, peace.